Hello guys and welcome to what is sure to be an incredible time here at the uh, World's 2013 Final Table. I'm Steven. I'm Robert. And we are here to enjoy uh, a Game of Thrones. As we said, this is the final from 2013 at Regionals in Minnesota. And we have on the left Alvaro or Alvaro Rodriguez, Alvaro. the seventh seed coming into uh, this uh, top eight. And Steven Simone, the fourth seed, sorry, coming into the top 16. And uh, both both guys obviously having a great run today. Mm -hmm. um, after only cutting to a top 16, it was hard to get into this thing. It was very hard. There place. were so many close calls, so and many strength of schedule calls and all that good stuff. And after that, then they had to prove themselves through the top 16 to a top 8 to a top 4. Mm -hmm. And now we find uh, these two guys playing for it all uh, on the championship. Of course, Alvaro, the Spanish national champion, flying all the way over here. And uh, Steven, I believe, a guy from the D.C. meta. D.C. A uh, classic. Our and, nation's capital. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> find themselves in the top quite common so that's a good group of guys down there very good at the game and uh, we're just going to take a look here we've got black sales baratheon uh against a lannister just no agenda what would you call this it was just a lannister a binder no agenda Lannister, uh, the good cards i talked to uh, alvaro after the game and he was describing his deck to me uh, but i didn't get the chance to see a list but he said he i think only had one duplicate of a character and it was tom and baratheon the the standard uh, one draw we need Tommen. And so uh, apparently, draw he placing a huge uh, in, in, like matter of import. Drawing yep. uh, being a critically important thing for Alvaro here. Mm -hmm. Maybe something to learn from for sure. Yeah, I always totally. Find myself shorting my uh, my draw ultimately. And look, only a three card setup here. Yeah, three card and three gold. More interestingly, that's that's bizarre. Uh, it's interesting when you see those kinds of hands. But Steven had a, a nice uh, opener. And but look it. at this hand, though. Look at Alvaro having two house divided, a castle, uh, and brigands. That's why he kept it. Probably two why house he kept divided. it. And, and I think, Oof. I think as a player of Thrones, you know, this is a lesson that I can learn from for sure. Is I have in my head, I want to set up X amount of cards. I want to use all five of my gold, regardless of what the rest of the cards in my hand are. I'll chuck something, even if it's all seven great cards. I can only set up two or three. I'll chuck it to try to get a better just blitz out on the open. Mm -hmm. Alvaro here choosing to instead take quality over quantity. That's right. And uh, I think maybe it'll pay off for him. We'll see. City of Lies over here on Alvaro's end. Going to drop some cards into Shadows and Naval Reinforcements on Steven's end. So he's only getting one card in the shadows, too bad. Uh, otherwise, could have gotten two. And what card is Steven going for? And again, like a non-optimal play yeah. from Alvaro, you would I'm, think. I'm so curious because that's one of the fine lines of like a really good uh, Game of Thrones player is knowing when to mulligan. Uh, if it were me, if I had three cards only spending three gold, I might have considered it. Yes, he had a, a good remainder in his hand with two house divided and some just powerful car cards and characters, but it's interesting, right? Yeah, it is very interesting, and let's not forget he did set up Iron Throne and Pintoshi. Mm -hmm. Those are great. <laughs> Both of which you have to imagine are, are critical cards in this kind of a matchup. That's totally correct. And, I mean, even with uh, that's Shireen out there, I believe, uh, that's a great one to say, nope, you're not doing your effect, not which I think it. is a standing effect, or yeah, is that something not, else? Not any phase. That's Maria usually is a standard. She's okay. the one uh, that can do some weird stuff with uh, the holy dudes. Holy dudes. I Shireen is all over. Uh, I believe she gives an intrigue icon. Actually, we'll uh, we'll figure that out. DLC worth coming in. Good old Dale. So this is going to be interesting, though. Um, like this is the toolbox of Baratheon with Black Sails, of course, and then you have Lannister, and they're kind of too boxy themselves these days, especially with this No Agenda build. They just have all these cards that do miscellaneous effects from well, not miscellaneous, but uh, you know, kind of targeting control effects from Neil to cancel to reduce strength and keywords from Potoshi and all that good stuff. So I, mean, I don't really know like what to anticipate from this game. It's really absolutely interesting. yeah, and important to note like we had two Baratheons and two Lannisters in the top four. Mm -hmm. So these are some strong houses right now. They're making good showing. And just to clarify on the Shireen here, one of the many uh, cheap Baratheon kneel to do a thing uh, yeah. cards, you can kneel her to choose a character and it cannot claim uh, power until the end of the phase. So it's a great counter to Renown and various things. Don't think it's going to hit Lannister terribly hard here. Watch out for the new Tywin. <laughs> watch out, yeah, exactly. Watch out for some of those key cards. <clears throat> All right, so going on to the marshalling phase here for Steven. He's got a Nightmares in hand. That's always good to see. I know this. Do you have an action? Absolutely. So Steven Neal in the Twilight Market, no action on all for Rosen. And it's, you know, even, I'm looking at this, even 
with only dropping one into shadows, that's still a five six one yep. plot. Just unbelievable. It's great, absolutely great. One of one of the best city plots, faux show, and high initiative too. Can't be beat for an opener in terms of city plots, unless you're doing like King's Landing coup or something like that. There are of course options, but I I love that one so much. And Dale comes in trying to uh, return a Baratheon card from the discard pile to hand, trying to return a C, and it is canceled with the Iron Throne. So he gets knelt, uh, and that's a really good use for the Iron Throne there. I feel like that's getting a character out of this phase, and it's also getting a uh, two resource out of this uh, marshalling. So very strong, uh, very strong Iron Throne play there. Mm -hmm. So question, Stephen. Let's say let's take Dale. If he leaves play. Can you, let's see if he gets discarded for whatever, can he return himself to play? Is that possible? Oh, don't ask me those questions. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, I think don't so know either. No. He's not, it, while responses are happening, he's still technically moribund, so uh -oh. he's not in the discard pile. Let's see, we're bouncing. Cost oh, divided, Mel. Mel, unbelievable. That, that is crazy. Four gold, out the window, screwing with the draw. House divided, that routinely. That card is unbelievable. Clutch, clutch to Lannister players, and that has to suck for Steven. The card is unbelievable. Uh-huh. There's... There's nothing else to say. Because now look, now look at his board. He has a total of two strength between two characters, and then that's that's two challenges only. He just, it's it's awful. He essentially unless he can stand some very little. Yep. Reduce. Over here playing with effectively four gold. And we're gonna get the Arbor Guardsman out there. Not too shabby. Leaving one gold open. And he's going to pay that one gold for a moneylender. It's a good call. Building. And going to set up for that castle the next turn so we can get some gold out of it. I mm -hmm. like that play better. A lot of players, I think, would go for the castle in first. Straight away, yeah. And then the arbor, but I think he wants that military icon as well. I think it's yeah. going to be really critical for him. Got to defend. No got to defend. And he's got, I mean, he can Potoshi out either challenge. That's here. true. Doesn't That's very matter. true. I forgot about that. Man, Potoshi. But every time. He can definitely attack. Mm hmm. Every time, Pintoshi. And that's the, the kind of thing you have to worry about. So often when I have other players who are playing against me in my Lannister decks, they'll pass challenges if there's too many Pintoshis. It's like, well, why bother? This isn't going to go anywhere. Yep. It's minus two to an attacking character. And Steven here asking what Pintoshi does, which and if a character's, if a character's I assume he knows. I think he's getting clarification. Can't be too, can't be too careful. The, uh, yes, correct. Power, still player actions. And ultimately, I don't know, like, at this point, Alvaro's board, which started a little uh, a little questionable here, I think, with a weak setup and uh, not making full use of his plot, is is really on top here. Yeah, can you imagine if he had gotten another card in Shadows? Or if either player had <laughs> gotten a full setup or anything like that? Yes, indeed. It's interesting. Okay. And Steven launching an uh, Intrigue Challenge, I believe. I'll take action. My action now. So, Into the Breach is played. I can't quite remember that. Looks like it's bringing a character into play. Into the Breach is going to put a uh, Brathen character into play from hand, and then it discards at the end of the phase. Interesting. And he's going to navel in. So he really wants that uh, intrigue wants that challenge. Intrigue. And that's a great way to make use of Black Sails and get your trigger off there. Mm -hmm. Great. Really Great good player. synergy here in this mm -hmm. deck. Love it. And then, of course, because of his agenda, he gets to search the hold, right? Yep. He's going to search the hold and get it at the end of the challenges phase. Oh, no. Yes. Boy, that's a bummer because that means Mel is in play next turn. That's right. News to Steven's ears for sure. And now it's a bit questionable here. Oliver not having any draw, and I think that's a bit of a concern at this point for Lannister. Really, actually, pretty low gold and pretty low on the draw here. Yeah, this uh, that one play into the breach has really turned things around, because now you get effectively uh, a, a tutoring type effect. You get to search, and it's it's a search draw. It's, it's pretty huge. Yeah. Oof, forget about it. And he's got some good options there. Narrow escapes. What else is he running? But what is he taking? It looks like a Jamie, Jamie Lannister, a new um, Kingsguard uh, card draw, Jamie. And that's going to work, I think, if he can pin Alfaro's shadow card down for another phase until he gets his Jamie out. That's going to get him an extra card. That's right. And I think he's planning on uh, that kind of that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Intrigue from the Moneylender. Will it go through? We'll see. Oppose? Going to oppose? Ulsherin. Doing some work. Yeah, sorry. And here we go on the Intrigue Claim. Can pull a card out. Claim one. 
And choosing... Oh, Kingdom of Shadows. Kingdom of Shadows. Fair enough. That's a good one, especially with Jamie in the mix. That's uh, two challenges he could otherwise work. And we're going to see... I, I believe Alvaro's probably going to swing in here on a military. I believe it might also be a power, though. Yes, power it is. That was something that I saw um, Alvaro doing pretty frequently. He generally will favor the power over the military challenge. Yes, yes, I was noticing that as well. And I wonder also, uh, given that Steven has the option to claim his Into the Breach character here, maybe uh, wouldn't have had that big of an impact, certainly on the board. Yep. It's going discarded anyway, so I think that's absolutely the right call on mm -hmm. Alvaro's. Get it while you can. All right, no shadows coming out, so everything's going to stand up. We're going to go back to the plot phase. Four cards in hand for Alvaro. I think five for Steven. It's neck and neck. So, Close oh game man. here, for, sh for certain. That, that Castellan play this turn, assuming it happens, is going to be a pretty big deal. And, of course, initiative in who's going first or second. Because is Castellan going to be there to kneel Melisandre or not? I mean, can you imagine if he still had that house divided, right? Oh, God. I just have to imagine that. <laughs> Forget about it. <laughs> so, City of Sin kneeling. Going to kneel one character, and City of Lies, shadow card coming in. Mm hmm So, which one do you kneel? He's going for Dale. Interesting choice. And then Lies is going to drop two cards Whoa. in. Whoa! That's really good. Assuming one of them is Jamie. I don't know. And then we're drawing cards here. Yeah, ah. little, uh, little, was that Tyrion? Tyrion, there, yeah, right? Shad is Tyrion. He is a beast. That's one of those cards you want to get out early as well, because he triggers every time a card is brought out of Shadow. It's not just your own. Yeah, I think that could pay dividends here for Alvaro. Mm hmm. No doubt about it. And I have to imagine there's maybe some black sales cells going on over here on the Baratheon side of the board. I think you're right. What a card. So do you think Dale was now just because he was the strongest, if you will, on the board? Yeah. I mean, you don't have... Yeah. He's also the only... Uh, he's the, the naval icon that you care about. That's true. That's true. So it's going to put pressure on to get naval. a naval, S, uh, naval icon out so he can trigger his agenda here. Yeah. I think you're right. And I, there goes the Laughing Storm. Fair enough. TLS. And I think that's an easy uh, option for Castellan here, unless we get a taste of your target. Yep. Castellan going to kneel him out and provide uh, an intrigue icon, mm -hmm. so that intrigue challenge is, is doable. So that's that's interesting. Um, but yeah, it doesn't look like he'll be able to afford Mel this turn because of that. Yeah, and I think that's... But she's safe in his hand now. I don't think he really needs right. Mel at this point. Mm -hmm. And he's going to hold two gold, likely for Shadows. <clears throat> All right, so he has a, a small fortune, three gold or six gold here, excuse me, to play with. Effectively eight, though. First up, looks like that. Castellan. Not what you wanted, but there it goes. And I love that that guardsman can trigger off City of Sin. That's uh, it's fantastic, a beautiful right? thing. Yeah. Right? And look at the Lannister board just come roaring back here. Kingdom of Shadows. Kingdom of Shadows. Fantastic. So I'm assuming he's going to save a little bit of money for that uh, Tyrion? A Tyrion there. And it looks like Steven is doing the same, maybe for Jamie. Uh-oh. No, no he's savings spending it. whatsoever. There's the Brigands. Ooh, the Brigands. Oh, man. What a terrifying character to have hit the board. Absolutely terrifying. Probably one of the best Lannister cards of the last couple cycles, even. Just great card. And it looks like no naval icons here up on the board for Steven, so that's going to slow down his ability to draw cards here. Mm -hmm. Could bring Jamie out. He does have the first Shadows action, so that's I right. think that's a strong play here. He might assume that Alvaro is going to bring out a Shadows card. That's right. It's a lot of choices here. Got to weigh it carefully, though, because, man, this is a crazy board. <laughs> it just has, it just congeals. I feel like, there's Jamie. 
And is he, is he going to try to trigger Jamie? Probably not, because then he just gets a no, right? Yeah. Jamie is, looks like, not triggering. So not triggering. Not bringing Tyrion out either. Yeah, he's a, he's a poor man right now. Mm -hmm. No gold. Well, of course, yeah, he spent his money. Derp. Those brigands, man, terrible. Yeah, I like this board. I, I think... I think Alvaro has the better of this board here. Yeah, I would agree. Jamie's going to have to do some work. He's going to hold Against off his this own tide. House, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah. let us not forget in a, an interview that we had with Alvaro after the fact, he did inform us that he's loved Lannister since Jamie pushed Bran out the window. So I don't think you can ask for a more uh, dedicated <laughs> Lannister fan. You're here. gonna gonna love or hate the house at that moment. <laughs> Three strike the intrigue from Sir Jamie here. All right, blocking with and six. Posing with six. Nice. And I think this is in case of uh, some shenanigans, which we probably have seen. Nightmares. Nightmares on the brigands. It's fair enough. And I honestly think that's a that's a good enough. I honestly think that that's a good enough uh, use of nightmares there. Yeah. I think bringing it out on the brigands early right here is probably uh, really working in Alvaro's favor. That's, I mean, are you going to prevent the intrigue no. challenge ultimately, I think, is the question you have to ask. And yeah. We're going to see based on Steven's challenges. No. So here we go. Of Military, going to get Pintoshi here. <laughs> of course, Pintoshi. Of course. A little surprised he might not. He didn't trigger the first turn with Kingdom of Shadows in play, but you know. And there's the defense. You got it. So only power left to go. Yeah, only power left to go. Military was defended. Looks like Castleton's gonna um, get an intrigue challenge if he wants it. Mm -hmm. However, he'd have to eat a power challenge here, so we're gonna have to see how that plays out. That's right. Two cards in hand. And how many does Steven have? None? Did he use I his I think he's got one? four. Really? I, wow. I, yeah, I, I've wow. seen him. He definitely has Mel and a few others. All right, so here it comes. And Castellan coming in on the Intrigue Challenge. Steven opted to pass challenges there. Mm-hmm. Looks like he's got three cards in hand. Opposed. Opposed with two. And yeah, we got three cards in hand. Claim one here. Boom. Ah, good choice. Narrow escape coming out. So Valor, I think, is on the table here. Yeah. Though I don't. Alvaro's not a real, uh, not a real heavy Valor play. Usually he just tempos the board for a while from mm -hmm. the other games that we've seen. He's not looking to nuke it. He can kind of survive for a while until you really need that clear. Yep. And with the, uh, I think he's running city plots by the looks of it, uh, they offer enough control that he should be able to manage no matter what. So he could play like City of Spiders here and nil two characters. Jamie Laughing Storm, that's a pretty solid turn right there to start with. Yeah, absolutely. So what is Steven going to do? This board is like precariously placed here for both players. A little yeah. bit will go a long way at this point. I, I love the economy over here on Alvaro's side. He's got two gold, and then he's got probably some more coming in from that Arbor Guardsman, mm -hmm. Castellan. And, it, you know, Steven's putting himself in a position where he doesn't want to value here, certainly. Yeah, yeah. But he's going to have to deal with this problem, I feel oh, like. Oh, Cersei schemes. Interesting Great play. time for forgotten plans. Yeah, yeah. man. <laughs> well played, it, it Steven. It always does something you want. <laughs> well played, Steven. <laughs> I mean, Alvaro could have easily gone any of those win revealed cities, and mm -hmm. he caught him on the passive turn. So. Yep. Too bad for Alvaro. That's a great Alvaro. call. Great yep. call. So, uh, I missed who was first player. Uh, let's see. We got three and six. I imagine Alvaro was six initiative. Certainly one. We're going to see. We'll see on the marshalling who's going first. Looks like Steven's getting ready. So yeah. We'll And he's attaching the chambers to his house card there, so that's an easy one gold. And an uh, influence, in case there's any weird effects, like uh, some of those Lannisport Neely cards that require a, <laughs> an influence to stop. All right, so what do you do with the rest? Because his economy is pretty limited now. I yeah, mean, he's got some reducers, life. but... Yeah. The non-uniques, if they pile up, it's it's going to be a tough spot. Silk, it means he can get Mel out, I think, here if he wants to, but... Opted not to, but... You've got to overextend 
here, you know, you'd have one card in hand, a board full of good dudes. Oh, no. And now Golden Tooth is out. That's the start of bad things from Lannister. So, okay, Castle and Triggers because of Gold Tooth coming out. And kneeling the only naval icon on the board here. Interesting. Interesting because he didn't go after uh, Laughing Storm, but smart play. Smart play. Knowing the strengths of the deck he's playing and taking them out. And old Marge. And there's Marge, who I imagine might bring the old Laughing Storm in before the Intrigue Challenge. Or even during. Or during, yeah. yeah. It's a scary prospect, Marjorie. Two cards in hand, two cards in hand, and it looks like Oliver has enough for Tyrion if he wants it, right? Mm -hmm. You're right. And uh, Marjorie will have melee because there is another uh, lady in play. Making her just ridiculous. And 14 cards at command for Aubra. <laughs> a new mechanic 13 to introduce counting. Over there. <laughs> so here comes the Shadow Killer. I can only imagine, right? Uh, yeah, right. You can only imagine that's a Shadow Killer. Yep. And it is. Kill something cannot be saved. Is it Marge or is it the Brigands? But he probably won't trigger it because of old uh, Iron Throne. Because the Iron Throne, yeah. So now he's going to trigger Jamie, and that's going to leave Alvaro with a very interesting decision. Lose a character or prevent the draw. Interesting. <laughs> it's got to weigh it carefully. This is a great, this is a great play, I think, on Stevens' end, yeah, and he's going to let the draw happen. Mm -hmm. Just playing around that Iron Throne really well. Yep. And then not triggering the uh, the killer. Yeah. Great. Those are some powerful keywords, nonetheless. Stealth and deadly, right? Uh, yes. And he's, uh, so he's a piece of work. He's it... just perfect for Mentoshi. Yeah. So I think Alvaro, I think I saw a maybe condemned by the council and another Castellan in his hand. Well, that's not a bad thing. Mm-mm. Taking out that string of silk could be a pretty, oh yeah, a pretty massive thing here. Yep, because that that's really the only economy Stephen has right now. The whole Twilight Market really uh, hasn't been doing terribly much thus far. I wonder how many Shadows cards Stephen has. Tashi Manor's pretty good. Yeah, Pintoshi uh, really <laughs> yeah. making these one strength guys uh, not as good yeah. as you'd like him to be. And you're like, man, I've got all these beautiful keywords, but. Brigands, what, are, what are they doing? <laughs> Brigands being able to defend and then stand right back up. Mm -hmm. I mean, once you take stealth and deadly away, Why Brigands not? are just all over everything. It's terrifying, really. And this is a game of cards right now. Definitely yeah. a game of, of, of card advantage. Mm -hmm. So he's sending who in? Shuffling the troops around here. Yep. Because, <laughs> yeah, this is so, so difficult. Really hard decisions to make. And this is with just one Pintoshi. Uh, it's something a lot of players uh, generally uh, talk about is that one Pintoshi is bad enough. Heaven forbid they get two. And certainly three. It's just a nightmare. Certainly. Certainly. One of the reasons Lancer is just so well positioned to go f uh, second at this point. More opportunistic Neils, Pintoshi Manners. It's crazy. And, I mean, Pintoshi being off-restricted is really, I think, why you see two Lannisters in the top four. Yeah. You can't deny how critical having Kassan and Pintoshi is. Mm -hmm. So, Steven doing the Intrigue Challenge, defended by the Brigands, uh, stands for the Brigands, but then, of course, Jamie stands because of Kingdom of Shadows. Yeah. So it's kind of like, well, Intrigue's out of the way. <laughs> and did he Pintoshi that? I mean... He did not. Oh, I mean, where's the stealth and deadly? What's, what's going on there? Yeah, I don't know. Um, so he did he pass, Stephen? Had the rest of his challenges? I couldn't quite tell. Looks like. So yeah, Marjorie bringing in power challenge, bringing laughing storm in. And Steven, considering an action here. Mm -hmm. It's a diffi difficult choice here because of melee. Uh, all these one strength guys aren't going to do anything else for him. we will just yeah. buff her strength. She's already at four, then she'll go to five and six. So Tough call. It's 
Mm, beefy entry coming in. Entry coming in. I feel like Marjorie won that challenge, but there's no claim, you know? So. Yeah. It was all just to get Laughing Storm in the party here. <laughs> Eight strength intrigue challenge. So you at least oppose it, but what other tricks does Baratheon have up their sleeve? Gotta wait and see. You have no left. And a three strength military remaining if Avro wants it. But Avro can play. He can play the. Uh, he can play the both. Both sides not doing military challenges game. Lannister can play that game. Mm -hmm. They're gonna ultimately win the intrigue battle. Well, uh, don't forget the brigands will stand. Oh yeah. That's crazy. Ah, uh, so crazy, man. <laughs> intrigue gonna be opposed by Shireen. Mm-hmm. And that's gonna yield a card to Alvaro here on the intrigue challenge. Just one. The bird. Carrying bird goes away. Brigand stand. Uh, there Condemn it is. the street of silk. Like clockwork. And now economy is going to be an issue for Steven here on top of the kneels. Yep. That it will. And the question really is who's going to blow this up first? Yeah. Right. It's really bad with, now because... Uh, with the location advantage that Alvaro has here. Exactly. I, I don't feel like Steven can drop a Valor. Yeah, because Alvaro is getting an extra card. Um, he'll have a gold that'll come through uh, if a Valor happens because of his Kingdom of Shadows. Two reducers compared to Steven's one, but that's only for Shadows cards. And Alvaro just taking the power for dominance and not even bothering with the military challenge. Mm -hmm. We saw that a lot from him last game. He was uh, he was a dominance fiend, just re reliably claiming it every time. Yeah, maybe not wanting to uh, get Dale off the board so that he can return that Nera C. Mm -hmm. Could be a lot of things. I mean, the... I, I would say watching these games makes me reconsider the strength and, and importance of the military challenge. Yeah. Um, having Alvra really pass on it a lot, Steven not really trying very hard for it. I feel like uh, what I once thought was a very powerful challenge may be actually uh, the, the, least, the yeah. least powerful. Mm -hmm. You've seen nothing but intrigue and power challenges really out of these two. That's right. And that's uh, that's kind of an interesting foil in terms of how they're playing to kind of uh, a theory uh, about what power and power challenges meant in this game. Because some people think that power doesn't matter until there's 15 of them. Sure, yeah. Um, but I, I would say that's that not before. necessarily true. And clearly, these guys, just by the way they're operating, don't really think so. So we got, what is that, Melisandre Schemes? Melisandre Schemes facing off against City of Spiders. We're going to duplicate City of Sin. Neil and two. I think I know which two. Yep, he loves Neil and Old Dale. You got a Neil Dale. And the Laughing Storm. Because you better believe there's a third Neil coming from Castellan. Triggering the old Arbor Guards. And drawing for Golden Tooth Mines. And just like that, three more cards in hand. Mm hmm. <clears throat> so this board looks pretty heavily tipped towards Lannister right now. Alvaro going first. It's got a decent amount of gold for a City of Spiders turn. Yes, absolutely. One card into Shadows there for two. And playing another... Another Goldie. Another Gold Weenie. I think you got to go Jamie, right? And Castlin's going to kneel. Unless he brings the Shadows card out, because uh, Kingdom of Shadows yeah, is still Yeah, kneeling the Shadow Killer a... here. I like that. I, yep. Even though I, I think... Five gold. There must... Uh, Usually in these situations, I feel like I, I missed something on that Shadow Killer last turn, but I also feel like maybe this the Stealth and Deadly with the Pentoshi discussion kind of assumed to be gone mm -hmm. in that thought process, but never actually kneeling <laughs> the Pentoshi to do so. Yeah. So all of a sudden, look at this board. You you know, you have three characters now up. Yep. Mel's Schemes is happening here. I the just, thing that's... Super scary to me, though, is that Steven has a card in Shadows, uh, Alvaro has two, and we, we know one of them is a Tyrion, so that, that could be a lot of uh, beefy <laughs> Tyrion action going on, because he'll get plus two strength and then a keyword of his choice whenever a card comes out of Shadows, which is just crazy. If you have a Tricon with, what would that be, a seven strength Tricon? Yeah. With uh, three keywords at that point? It's crazy. Yes, indeed. 
And so really not not that strong of a Mel schemes turn to be honest. Yeah. They are really one of the key centerpieces of those explosive turns. Mm -hmm. But there is a new um, uh, naval icon character out for Steven. That's good for him. There is indeed. Hopefully he can get some, some sweet stuff out of his hold. And two claim there on Alvarez's side of the board. Mm -hmm. I think I will be done. I have one gold left for shadows. All right, Shadow's over here on Alvaro's side. Oh, discarding an ally, one of his own. <laughs> That's not exactly what you want, but Varia is a great character anyway. Yeah, making use of it. That stealth will be very interesting this turn. And I'm I'm kind of surprised he brought uh, Varus out instead of all... Uh, Tyrion. I feel like I feel like Tyrion is the uh, I think I think he's the anti-valor play. I think he's going to sit back there until Steven is forced to valor and now all of a sudden you have this insane character who cannot be taken off the board. Yep. And I feel like that's what he's waiting on here. So, Marge was nightmared, so she's blank, and then we have a potent entry challenge with stealth. And we're going to see if you want to maybe naval uh, Corrine here in before the challenge so he can't be stealthed out. Remember now, all smuggler characters do have stealth. Not really applying to much right now. And again, the naval really not important because he already has stealth. Mm -hmm. So he can't be stealthed out of the challenge, but can't be too sure. Yes, that's right. And I mean, you're looking at this. But what's crazy here is that Alvaro likely to win this unless something crazy happens. Both of those characters in that entry challenge are going to stand. Stand right back up. It's Nothing before stealth. nuts. And Alvaro declaring stealth. On Shireen. On Shireen. No weenies. Well, this weenie. <laughs> and Old Red Priest is going to come in here. That's right. He's a seasoned veteran since the first turn. You know, one thing we consistently see in these finals matches is standing characters. And Shireen opposes. It looks like she was stealth, so I think just both of these players just not miss caring terribly much. Mm -hmm. Mel and Street of Sisters. Fantastic. And that like is, we said here, everything that's super demoralizing. Whenever you can have a board that does not deteriorate during mm -hmm. the challenges phase, that's what we saw with long lances. Is what we're seeing with these standing effects, just unbelievable. Yeah, standing, so strong, so very strong. So here comes that military challenge. Military from the brigands here. Kind of daring Stephen to uh, to oppose and maybe even win it. It's going to be hard. He'd have to use everybody. And then again, not getting to trigger his uh, navel. Yeah. But it's two claims, so it's just token opposition here. Opposed with the priest here. Mm hmm. And I. Do you. Do you Valor, you know? Like, that's the question I consistently ask myself is Steven. It's like, all my stuff keeps getting knelt down. I've experienced this against Lannister. Mm -hmm. If you Valor, you, already knelt and still use Iron Throne. you're not really going. All right, a claim two here. And I think after this two claim, it looks awfully good, that Valor. I think Alvaro, yep. knowing that he's in a strong position here, Tyrion in shadow is really nice for him. Yeah, because Alvaro's board is only going to continue to get stronger uh, and suffering all these effects of his two-claim plot, both for intrigue and military now and assuming power, but there's no power to steal. Um, it kind of might force Steven's hand here. We'll see. All right, so he kills Dale, tries to trigger to return a Baratheon location, but cannot do it. That's right. So now still a power challenge to go probably inconsequential unless he just wants the unopposed because Marjorie can't even pull anybody in so oh, oh I forgot Castellan over there wow yeah, he still has so many characters unopposed Jeez. challenge here we go why not looking look at that 
So there it is. And challenges go over to Steven here. Two challenges, probably going to be covered up pretty easily. Mm -hmm. He's got seven strength on Intrigue here. Looks like five is all that can be mustered. Yep, because if you throw that Intrigue challenge at him, well, he'll probably win it, and then he'll get to stand the Brigands again. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, you think all uh, Corrine there might come in with the stealth, but then he'll get Pentoshied. Exactly. And uh, it's just awful. Be that. Awful. Uh, shadows for Dom. Oh, okay. All right, so no challenges from Steven. Fiery kiss. Fiery kiss coming in. Triggered. Excellent. So it's going to let him bring a card back into play. And then he's going to try to trigger Dale yet again. Yeah. Melisandre. Okay. There so she gonna is. Get Mel. It, can, it can get any Baratheon card of the discard pile. And then going to trigger Jamie. And then Dale is going to leave play at the end of this phase, and he's going to get to trigger yet again. <laughs> Hilarious. That's, that card's doing some work, man. Truly got a fiery kiss there. <laughs> Unless there was a, uh, there may be a limit on Dale, eh? Actually, there's no response when it in a phase, so that explains go. that. It was better than I wanted it to be, or thought it was. <laughs> you can never quite be sure with uh, Game of Thrones, man. So now you look at this board, and just the sheer quantity of board over there on Alvaro's side. Valor doesn't really solve this problem, <laughs> it does and, not. I, and I think this is this is the situation you can find yourself in in Game of Thrones above all else. And soldiers against Valor, so looks like Alvaro might have been a little surprised there from his uh, gesture. Not not quite sure, but. Uh... I don't know if he was quite expecting that. I, he might not have been if he was playing City of Soldiers. Yeah, I, I don't think he would play Soldiers here if you expect the Valor. So there it goes. Uh, so now it's it's really all about uh, <laughs> who's got the Econ. Yeah, and I think absolutely. based off of what we're seeing here, it's it's Alvaro. And remember, we were talking about uh, you know Alvaro only running one duplicate in the entire deck. And mm -hmm. now you got to think, his entire deck is still live here. We yep. haven't even seen a Tommen. So that Valor doesn't do anything as far as dead cards are concerned. And this is something, when we first got into the game, if anyone has been following us for a long time, it's like, why are people running just binders of cards? And the oh, thing is, Lordy. you can right now. Old Tywin. You can, you can do it. There's Tywin. Mm -hmm. And man, he's good to see, isn't he? Yes. <clears throat> Don't know if he'll actually be able to go off this turn. We have uh, another we'll Pintoshi in Alvaro's hand here. Ugh. Cards in hand? Four? Very curious how this one's going to work. Okay, so Tywin, he's going to save that. I think he's going to bring Tyrion out here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with a zero claim turn coming in, he can afford to be a, a little bit light on the board. So this is our fifth plot, so two to go. You have to imagine um, Alvaro's also running a Valor. Yes. I mean, he, he wouldn't be at the final table unless he was. Uh, so, uh, and I'm pretty sure I saw the previous game. But, uh, anywho, so this is interesting because he has two plots to go before he must play it. He's um, got to play it cool here. Yeah, he can't overextend. But that begs the question. He, he might already be thinking about, like, will he bring that Tyrion out if he's just two turns away from Valor anyway? Yeah, maybe he'll just Valor next turn yeah. and get it over with. <laughs> Which and is... And that'll give it back to him for exactly, the next plot yeah. cycle. Yeah, that's... <laughs> And no shadows for Alvaro, so yeah, you're, mm -hmm. you're correct. Black Sails. Uh, Black Sails, Neil, Neil and Tywin. Or more or less kneeling, but not actually kneeling. Yeah, uh-huh. He just can't do anything. And Alvaro taking dominance, which he loves to do. <laughs> yes. If you'll notice anything about all Alvaro's games... <laughs> He's always winning dominance. Yes. I mean, just one gold here, uh -huh. you know, one strength there, he's winning it. He's just going for, like, incremental victories where he can, controlling the player, and then dominance will eventually get him the game. Yeah. <laughs> so, Valor? Oh, yep. he's doing it. Yeah, he's just getting out of the way here. Yep. Don't have to worry about it. A lot of the board away. So I'm guessing... On my oath, yeah, I'm going to um, trigger last. I'd imagine he'll go for Jamie. Get Jamie back in the shadows. All right, so Steven deciding who first player is going to be. You you have to make yourself first and trigger that Valor. Yeah. 
Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see what happens here. It always it is always good to have uh, the Valor player go first. Mm-hmm. And going first here, going to trigger Jamie, bring him into shadows, and Tywin and the bird are going to die. Black Sills is a, a good card for Steven, though, because if uh, Tyrion ever decides to rear his ugly head, he'll immediately get uh, nuked by those Black Sills. Yes. All right, so now is when I, I feel like... I feel like Steven has managed to get a little bit of recovery here. Yeah, he's kind of stabilized. He's looking better. <laughs> he's got a black cells for a little control. He's got a seat of power to explode out now that both valors are off the table. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, it's kind of one of those things you can't explode too hard because two plots from now, valors are in play again. So exactly. you got to always be playing around that. Which is uh, another reason why I think Alfro's tactic here of just going for the reliable dominance wins is so good. Just yeah. like, eh, I'm just going to kind of control you and do what I can in challenges. But aside from that, this is a steady drumbeat of dominance wins. Definitely playing the long game here. Mm -hmm. Which is something Lannister, uh, especially this deck with uh, only one duplicate, which isn't even dead yet, uh, can really leverage. If uh, if the uh, naval icon characters on Steven's side of the board are properly handled, uh, he has the card draw to just outpace him. Yes, yes, that is correct. And this is, Lannister can play the long game. Mm -hmm. That is, I think, the ultimate strength of this house. They have the card draw and the gold to do it. They can constantly be putting pressure. They can kneel out your key characters. And I think more importantly than all, like we said, is card draw, card draw, card You cannot play a long game without card draw, mm -hmm. period. And that's what Steven's really suffering from right now, not being able to trigger his agenda except once this entire game is a big deal. And, and Mel coming out here, really, I think because it's all that there is to play. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and he does have some card in Shadows. Uh, I didn't catch who he brought with his uh, plot back into Shadows. Brought Jamie back in, uh, yeah. Jamie, Definitely yeah. saw Jamie. I imagine. So he could bring him out for two, and that's a great card, of course. And then he's going to get melt <laughs> by that Iron Throne. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> of course, likewise for Alvaro. He's going to be losing a, a card to Black Cells here mm -hmm. once Jamie comes out. It's so. kind of quid pro quo with Shadows right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and really, knowing how much card draw is in Alvaro's deck here, it's only a matter of time before it all gets out here on the table. All right, so that's another smuggler with a naval. Not sure what his effect is. I can't even remember the name of that guy. That's the beauty of watching this. You know, it's hard to stay up with everything from Thrones. That's the old uh, Lysini pirate. After you win a challenge in which he was declared a naval attacker, you claim one power on him. So Interesting. At least a naval icon, so maybe he can sneak in a military <laughs> challenge here with that. Yeah. But I, he can't... He, he's got a navel in, so it's oh, oh, it's awful here. So he's already knelt. Nasty. So tough call for Alvaro here. Mm -hmm. He's got two gold. Is he just going to save it for another dominance win or not? It's an interesting question. Certainly, I think I think if he holds here, Mel just stays put and wins, gets two power for dominance. Maybe, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. But then he's got four on his end. I believe Steven's got one gold, so they're tied for dominance currently. Oliver having to weigh these out, I think. And discard pile. Or that's the dead. That's pile, the dead. Like. So maybe Kyburn is in shadows. Who knows. That's usually the only reason a Lannister player would ask that question. <laughs> that is, and maybe he's doing that, you know, to 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 create that kind of suspicion. Because as far as we we know pretty well, that's Tyrion down there, right? Yeah. All right, another fiery kiss coming out of shadows. Ready for some shenanigans from Baratheon? Because here it comes. What's he getting though? And we may get another Dale here. Boy, it's just amazing to see the resilience here. An extra spot. And there you go. Black Cells, the enemy informer. <clears throat> Great recovery here by Steven, I feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's Tyrion coming out here. And he's going to get Renown. And Ooh. that is scary with Kingdom of Shadows out. Yep. It sure is. Tyrion can put some serious pressure on here. I love that play. The fact that he's a Tricon 
is insane to me. One plot left. Mm -hmm. One plot left. And, you know, this is beautiful. What this what it means to me is that uh, I think Steven has to win the Intrigue Challenge here, trigger the Kingdom of Shadows for nothing, or else Tyrion's going to go on a, an onslaught here. <laughs> but can he? You know, you've got a Pentoshian play. He has to sacrifice everything to try to win this. Intrigue, three strength coming in. And he's going to go ahead and navel in here. He's got built-in stealth. Can't stealth him, yeah. And that might have been a mistake on Steven's part. Maybe he was counting on that stealth, which is why why he chose him as opposed to Dale or something like that. Hard to be sure. And Pintoshi and the smuggler here. And he's at five on the defense, obviously, because he just came out of shadows, gets plus two. Mm -hmm. And now he's going to stand back up with Kingdom of Shadows. And winning that challenge with Renown. Unbelievable. Bananas. Old Tyrion. <laughs> All right. um, uh, and Tyrion coming on a power challenge. Yeah, no claim, so the challenge no claim is irrelevant. Much yeah. matter. <laughs> so and one goal again, Ooh. winning dominance here, yeah. unless there's dominant shenanigans. And Dominus going to Alvaro here. So, so like we said, putting severe pressure on here. Um, ten power on the board here for Alvaro, and one plot left with no Valors possible yep. here. So, so this is a turn you turn. can push yeah. here for the win. <laughs> if Steven actually had power in his house, it would be a much more dangerous situation for him. City besieged. City besieged. He's going to nuke that Black Cells. Got to nuke the Black Cells, yeah. That was the only thing really uh, holding Alvaro back at this point, I think, from Steven's side of things. And he has, first player decision going to Steven. He's going to have a, a whopping amount of gold, decent control. Uh, he, has, he has a good shot of winning this turn. Okay. We'll see. It's gotta be. It'll kind of hinge on whether uh, Alvaro can get another card into Shadows, give Tyrion Renown again, that kind of thing. Yeah. I don't imagine he'll have too much of a problem there. Yeah, he's got three cards to draw. Good shot. Good shot. All right. Yeah, Shadow Black for Black Cells. Not mm -hmm. a bad trade there at all. Yeah, not at all. And Alvaro drawn three cards pretty much the whole game this turn. That is just so disheartening to see on the yeah. other end of the board. So Steven with three cards, Alvaro probably six or seven, maybe more. And I'll say this, Thrones is not a game of big swings. No. Um, once you get on top, it is it is much easier to stay on top than it is in some other games where your opponent has some bomb, you know, things that they can just turn <laughs> things around in an instant. A smart, patient player can really stay on top of a, a board here. Okay. Alright, trying to trigger a solid hour here. I think he's gonna try to kill a location. I think that's his effect. Can't quite remember what he does, but it was canceled nonetheless. Canceled indeed. There's a little Salador. You can pay two gold to discard an unlimited location of three or lower, and, and that'll get canceled, of course. All right. So, and S Stephen put another card into Shadows. Oh man, there goes Mel. Castling on Mel. Mold. This could be it, man. Yeah, this is a this big turn. This could be it. And there's Shadows yeah, there to give is. Tyrion Renown. I feel like this is the push turn here. And actually going to do a favor. Potentially there's Ooh, Black another, Cells. Another okay. Cells. Going to kneel him. He... And Jamie coming out. And he's still going to give him like Renown or something. May as well give him something. Kingdom of Shadows can bring him back online. Well, he's not knelt. He just can't kneel. Oh, yeah. He can't kneel or stand from things. Black Cells yeah. as well. You're right. So he's just out of action. But, but Jamie, Jamie has renowned, the renowned <laughs> replacement here. Ugh. And only one icon standing for Steven. That's the worst of this. Intrigue challenge. We know Kingdom of Shadows is going to make this easy. Unopposed renown. And he gets uh, Sir Boros there. One for unopposed, one for renown. So and three I think, away. I think Avra feels this nearing, nearing in here. 
Power challenge is unopposed. Two away. And that's it. it. He scoops it up. Yep. Wow, just a that's it, man. Here, that I was think. that was the the slow tempo burn of a Lannister deck. Uh, no duplicates, just classic Lannister card draw econ. A little bit of shadows here and there, just control all the way through as well. It's uh, great. Amazing game. Super congrats to Steven Simone from DC. Well done getting to the finals. A very hard journey through a lot of decks, and you can't you can't deny how good that uh, that makes a player and how good that feels. Mm -hmm. And a huge congrats to Alvaro coming all the way uh, as the Spanish national champion uh, coming over to Minnesota to play in this the world tournament <laughs> and just sweeping it in what I feel is a display of a Lannister deck that is about as good as it gets. I don't think you can see mm -hmm. Lannister played more to their strengths than what we just saw and this was I think this was the meta for Lannister to come in and do it I've got to say. Yeah I think you're right man. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you Alvaro and Steven for uh, allowing us to film this game and put it on YouTube. Thank you guys all out there for supporting Game of Thrones. This game is growing and it is just a phenomenal game. It is. Uh, if you want to support what we're doing here at Team Covenant, then we do have chapter packs and the like for sale. You can get subscriptions where they just sent right to your door. And that's a lot of fun. And uh, we also have some cool stuff coming for that game down the pipe. So stay tuned. Thank you guys again for watching. We'll leave you with the winners.